the lines at food banks like this because people just can't afford to live. Hello. Visiting the Helping Hands Food Bank is simply a weekly way of life for Elizabeth Pohl and her family. Her husband has a good job as a concrete worker, but it doesn't pay all the bills for their family of four. Milk prices have gone up about $3. Cheese has gone up probably about 4 or $5. Gas is outrageous. Prices are climbing out of reach for both people using food banks and the food banks themselves. For example, two years ago at this time, a truckload of peanut butter cost around $34,000. Now it's $40,000. The same amount of tuna has jumped from $46,000 per truckload to $57,000. At Everett's Volunteers of America Food Distribution Center, the number of people in need is up nearly 25%. Rising costs must be absorbed or passed on to the clientele who can't afford it either. Yeah, we're concerned for shortages. We're concerned probably not to have enough money to make food purchases. So. VOA's Chris Hatch says hungry families may have to do more with less. If current rates go as they are, we could see some smaller boxes. I mean, it could end up affecting what we can give out to our families. Good afternoon. Back at Helping Hands, Executive Director Rebecca Scrindy says it's a simple matter of economics. 80% of them have jobs, but with all the price, their salaries did not raise 40% to cover, you know, groceries. Putting food on the table is becoming more challenging for families as inflation makes grocery shopping more expensive. It's also putting a strain on local food banks, which provide meals for families in need. WMAR 2 News' Mark Roper is live outside the Maryland Food Bank in Halethorpe. So, Mark, what kind of impact is inflation really having on the Maryland Food Bank and the services it provides? Good morning, Megan. Well, you know, a lot of families are struggling, struggling right now. Times are tough. And between COVID and rising inflation, the demand to help those families in need has the Maryland Food Bank buying more food than ever. Now, that's because prices just keep going up with no end in sight, making it very difficult for many Maryland families to just make ends meet. Now, the overall cost of food, housing, and energy continue to climb as inflation is up 8.5%. According to the financial services company Moody's Analytics, inflation now costs families about an extra $330 a month. Administrators with the Maryland Food Bank estimate one in three people in Maryland are having trouble putting food on the table. From the start of the pandemic in March 2020 through February 2022, the Maryland Food Bank has distributed enough food to provide more than 88 million meals. It's a 66% increase over the same period pre-COVID-19 from March 2018 through February 2020. The Maryland Food Bank is buying more food than ever as the rising cost of food and other household expenses puts more families in need. Before COVID, the Maryland Food Bank bought 12 million pounds of food at 45 cents a pound. Now they say they're buying 30 million pounds of food at nearly 80 cents a pound. Children often are the ones to suffer the most from a lack of access to food. Impossible choices people are having to make um, between food, as your prior guest uh, was talking about, food and medicine and fuel, um, just trying to stretch their dollar. For food banks, they've had to rely on food purchasing. And there we know that we're paying about 40% more for the food that our network is purchasing. And what a lot of folks don't understand is when we get donated food, which is down in our network, we still have to pay the fuel and freight costs to move that food from point A to point B. And so this combined impact of increased demand and the increased cost of doing business is continuing to make this a real struggle for the Feeding America network of food banks. And food insecurity obviously existed before the pandemic, before the surge in inflation. But how have these added pressures impacted the demographics of who's actually in need of food assistance? Yeah, so what's really troubling about what we're seeing in uh, food insecurity in this country is that there were disparities uh, among different populations in this country before the pandemic, where uh, black households were almost two and a half times more likely than white, white households to be experiencing food insecurity, uh, Latin households about two times more likely. What we've seen through the pandemic is those disparities and gaps have only grown. And so we're very concerned that we're continuing to be in a position where rather than closing gaps among various demographics in the country around food and sec food security, we're seeing those gaps uh, widen. They're feeling the effects to keep up with the surging demand. CBS 7 Stephanie Douglas explains how inflation is having an impact on the food bank's local operations. Stephanie? 
Well, Jane, Mary Kate, between the pandemic and supply chain issues, now add inflation to the mix. The West Texas Food Bank says lately it's been challenging keeping up with the rising price of food costs. Each month, the West Texas Food Bank distributes a million pounds of food, a number likely to increase by summer, with more facing food insecurity in the community due to inflation. We have seen over 400 cars um, every week that we have had our pantry this month, uh, and we don't expect that to go down anytime soon. But the community is not the only ones feeling the rising cost of goods. It's the food bank, too. Since inflation has hit the economy, it's also driven up the food bank's operating costs, spending more on food and fuel. We run a fleet of vehicles. We've got box trucks. We've got transport vans. We've got uh, two tractor trailer, 18 wheelers, and the fuel for all of that has gone up about 25 percent. The border crisis has also caused rippling effects on food. Part of Governor Greg's Abbott border strategy plan is for vehicles on the border to go through more security inspections, which means more time in between when a product is shipped out and where it's received. This time of year, most of the produce is coming out of Mexico, so we are, we are definitely struggling to keep those fresh items uh, on our shelves.